Hi and welcome back to another video. Today we are talking about Zoom and how to schedule a meeting and then invite people to that meeting. Um, this will be a reasonably um, long tutorial, um, just kind of going through all of the various options that we have when we set up a, a scheduled meeting. Um, but if you do find it useful, um, please do click on the like button, hit subscribe and tap that bell. It does mean a lot to the channel. Um, and with all that said, let's jump on over to Zoom. Okay, so here I am just inside the desktop application um, and what I'm going to do is come over to the schedule section just here um, and give that a click. Now, this opens up the schedule meeting dialog box where we can give a topic to the meeting. So what I'm going to do is actually, I quite like that, I'm going to call it this office guys Zoom meeting, um, which is by default. Then our next set of options here is to say when our meeting is and what time it's going to take place. So I'm going to say this is going to take place today and it's going to take place um, at 12.45 um, and it's going to last for one hour. Okay. Um, if I would like this to be a reoccurring meeting, I would have this little toggle box here. I can just tick on that um, and then I can have the further options here to basically schedule that um, reoccurrence as needed. Um, so I'm actually going to untick it because I do not need a reoccurring meeting um, and I'm just going to leave it out like this. So that is Saturday um, at 12.45 for one hour. Um, then the next set of options here is the meeting ID. Now I can generate one automatically or I can use my personal meeting. Um, generally speaking if you if you use Zoom a lot and you um, have a lot of meetings that you're scheduling, I would personally just say generate automatically um, and try to leave your personal meeting room um, ID for something uh, or some meetings that are a bit more personal to yourself um, rather than um, just setting up uh, all meetings to kind of flow through that one ID. Uh, this way, if you generate automatically and you have meetings that overlap, etc., um, then actually, you know, that is a much better method. So I'm just going to leave that as um, generate automatically. Next, we can give a password to our meeting. Um, so this is a numerical password. Um, so you get to get to choose a password that you would like to give it. So I'm just going to copy this one here. Um, as my meeting password. Okay, next um, on the option here is video. So the host can say that um, you would like everybody to have video feeds by default on um, or you can have them off. So depending on your scenario, so if you're um, a teacher for example and you're you know, providing a lecture remotely then you as the host might want your video feed to be on whereas you might want everyone else's uh, participant wise um, to have theirs switched off. Um, so generally speaking um, that would be the scenario you'd go for. Um, for me personally I am actually recording this video from um, my camera so I'm going to have to select off for me um, and on for others. Um, so again this also works if you're intending to actually share your desktop um, rather than your um, video feed. With that being said it doesn't matter what you personally select here as the host because you can override that in the meeting itself um, and participant wise you can also adjust theirs if needs be whilst the meeting is happening. Um, however, um, generally speaking, leave it on and then switch it off unless you absolutely need to make sure that they do not share their videos, uh, video feeds. So um, think about your audience and who's actually participating um, and then choose the option that suits best there. Um, okay, so next is audio. Um, so telephone, computer, telephone and computer or third party audio. Um, generally, you want to leave this in the telephone and computer because then you're going to cover a wide range of people who join your meeting. Um, then under here you have dial-in locations, so I've got United Kingdom and United States, but we can edit this and then choose other countries that we'd like to include in our meeting. Um, and then this is important for the invite part later on when we invite people in, they can join via different methods. So it's important that we include the countries um, where people might be actually dialing into our meeting. Um, so if I select Switzerland for example, Portugal, um, and then let's say Italy, I can click done and now we have um, a list of countries in which our meeting is actually going to be um, taking place into. Now next is calendar, so we have an Outlook calendar, um, a Google calendar or other calendars 
Um, so I'm just going to click on my Google Calendar in this scenario. And then we go into more options here, the advanced options. This is um, where you get to decide whether or not you want a waiting room. Um, and if you enable this option here, the waiting room basically means um, that no one will be able to pass into the actual meeting without first the host of the meeting being present to approve them in. Um, so, um, and that's where that section there comes in, right? So enable join before host. So you want to enable a meeting room um, and then you want to enable the join before host. Um, and basically what this actually means is it basically allows um, all your participants to join the meeting and wait in the waiting room. And then when the host has joined, you'll be able to sign them in um, and approve them into the meeting. Okay. Um, so those two are very powerful functions. Now, with that being said, if you... Um, if the meeting that you're scheduling does not require a host to actually enable people to join and actually participate in the meeting uh, and you want the meeting to take place potentially without the person who's scheduling um, then in which case just untick those because you don't want that to be the case um, so i've asked some scenarios where one person might be scheduling um, a whole host of meetings for an entire team of people um, but may not actually attend them meetings uh, that themselves right um, and in that scenario you want to make sure that those are unticked um, but if you want to control the meeting uh, in the terms of like that example where you're um, uh, teaching and you're you know providing a lecture then you're going to want to make sure that um, no one starts that meeting and they all go into a waiting room until you've actually started it okay next on the option here is to mute participants upon entry now this is really useful um, but uh, I think it really depends on the scenario so for me personally I wouldn't use this um, but you might find it a really useful feature if there's lots of chitter chatter um, before actually joining the meeting this option here basically just mutes them um, when they go into the meeting for the first time okay um, next is only um, authenticate users um, authenticated users can join so they have to have a zoom account in order to actually join your meeting um, again really useful um, for very specific circumstances so really think about whether or not you want to use that option or not um, when scheduling meetings the last option here is um, to automatically record meetings so you obviously can record meetings um, whilst you are you're actually inside that meeting you can click a record button and you can start recording at the point of view um, basically selecting record um, but this option here basically lets you start the recording the moment that the meeting starts um, and then when you hang up it will save that meeting down um, so useful but again you're going to want to really make sure that um, you use it under the right circumstances so if you're um, for, okay, let's say you're a board of directors and you're having a board meeting via Zoom, then in which case, yeah, sure, record it um, automatically this way. Um, that way you kind of have a minute of what happened in that meeting from dot go, okay? Um, lastly, here we have the alternative hosts. So we can actually set up specific people to also act as hosts for that meeting. So like I said before, if you're um, setting up a meeting um, for or multiple meetings for multiple different people you can basically dictate who is the host of each meeting um, from this particular section here which then means um, enable join before host would work on the email address that you've added in um, to this alternative hosts section um, but that is it so once you've done all of those things you can click schedule to, um, here and I can just add another actually now I can add it here that's fine um, and then I could just add that in allow um, and this will only have to be done um, the first time you have a calendar um, and that's because I selected to send um, my invite into my Google calendar um, if you have Outlook it would have opened up Outlook and saved it in there I'm just going to click OK on that and this is now looked um, as basically loaded up my Google Calendar um, in uh, Chrome here and has basically shown, is now showing me all of the details of that particular meeting where I can save it. Um, so 12.45 to 1.45 on the 6th of June um, UK time. And then inside here we have obviously the link to the meeting, um, notification 30 minutes beforehand, and my email address 
what status I am, busy, visibility, and so forth. And then down at the bottom here, um, we have the actual invitation itself, right? So because of the countries that I selected, we have all of these phone numbers down in this list just here. And what this basically now means is everyone who gets this invite from these countries, they can dial this number and it will basically send them directly into our meeting okay and they'll obviously have to put in the meeting ID and the meeting password um, when they dial this number um, but they basically it's, it's a very straightforward process they dial the number it was a say type in the meeting ID type in the password welcome to the meeting I um, mean it's very straightforward to join um, under here we have a one tap mobile option which basically means if you're on a mobile device and you tap this number it will actually dial not only the local number for the United Kingdom but it'll also automatically put in the uh, meeting ID and it will automatically add the um, password at the end there so that you basically you don't have to type any numbers in it takes you straight into the meeting itself and um, what you can do obviously is copy this on all this detail here and actually now create an email and send this out to people uh, I'm just going to click save and there it is in our calendar as you can see um, and I can see I can click into this and you can see all these uh, meeting details and so forth so I can click on any of these links and that will send me straight into that particular meeting that we just scheduled um, and that's how you schedule a meeting uh, and it's as simple as that and now we can see over here inside the app the meeting um, that is now due it's overdue so I can click on start and that will take me straight into the meeting um, that we just created I can join with computer audio because it recognizes that I'm on from the desktop um, and we can invite people if we want um, if we need to and we can email the invites out if we chose um, and likewise we can start the video so like I was saying before where we disabled the video I can also enable the video just from here as well um, and that is it guys it's as simple as that to schedule a zoom meeting um, and basically send out the invites to everybody who you need to join um, if you found this useful then please do click on the like button hit subscribe and tap that bell it means a lot to the channel um, and with all that said I will catch you guys in the next video